Viewers and subscribers, welcome back to Beating the Press Podcast. I am your host, Rafa. Now, coming up in today's podcast, we're going to be previewing, looking ahead to the two big games coming up on the weekend. Liverpool taking on Man City, top of the table clash. And of course, the fight for top four continues. Aston Villa playing host to Spurs. Now, joining me this evening to preview these two big matches and to talk some football, we have returned into the podcast, Sir Cole. Greetings, well, uh, glad to be back as usual. <laughs> yes, indeed, Sir Cole. Lots of matches <laughs> taking place and things are really heating up in the EPL. You know, this weekend could be a weekend of deciding the champions. You know, Liverpool, top of the table versus Man City. And of course, Spurs taking on uh, Aston Villa. But let's jump straight into it, Sir Cole. Battle for fourth, Aston Villa at home. Versus Spurs. How do you see that one? As I see, it's going to be a very tight game. Um, <clears throat> both with, you know, things on on the line, trying to secure their spot in in Europe for next season. So expect a very nail biting encounter in in, in that one. <clears throat> yes, definitely. I mean, Aston Villa yeah. has what a five point lead over Spurs in fifth, but Spurs do have that game in hand versus Chelsea. So technically, both teams can't really afford to slip up. You know, Spurs really chasing down Aston Villa, and of course, Aston Villa trying to stay ahead of that chasing pack for fourth. So I mean, it's really all to play for in this one. Again, Aston Villa at home has had some really good. Ah, uh, results at home, beating Man City, beating Arsenal. Can they beat Spurs is the question, Sir Cole. And can the Jamaican, Leon Bailey, really hit the ground running and come up with the goods again? Well, <coughs> they, they are really in some quiet form. Um, quite, quite, quite good form, sorry. I believe, yes, they do have the, the tools to, to get the, the job done. Mind you, with the return of Son to Spurs, there should be... You know, a bit more potent going forward. However, the loss of Richarlison should should affect them as well. Even though he has reported that that, that, that he's back in training, but somehow the, you know those reports are a bit um, dubious. Uh, should be a, a tight affair. However, I just say that this game should probably be even in terms of the tactics of, of the teams because. Aston Villa with their high line, Spurs can likely hit on the counter and looking for Son to really exploit the space in behind that, that, that Villa defence. So, expecting a good game in that one. Ah, uh, yes. I mean, you, you speak of the tactics, definitely. And we've seen over the course of the season, you know, Spurs is a team which is position-based now, building from the back combining passes through the defense, through midfield, and really spraying the ball either out wide or some two balls uh, for the forwards to run on to. I mean, we saw last week where Werner got a couple of one-on-one -on -one chances being released on the goalkeeper, but again, failing to convert. He did eventually end up getting a goal in that one, so his confidence should be good going into this game circle. And as you mentioned, Aston Villa continues to persist with this high line uh whether they are playing at home or away it's the same tactic we see being employed by emery and the question is can the spurs offense really exploit this i mean the return of madison has really galvanized the spurs team as well so not only is son back but madison is also playing close to his peak and really you know, finding those killer bars and those killer passes. Uh, unfortunately, as you mentioned, Richarlison is out injured. Uh, maybe this game comes a bit too early for him. But from an Aston Villa point of view, Sir Cole, Watkins is red hot. He is probably the hottest striker in England, if not Europe currently. He seems to not be able to miss these days. Yeah, um, he really is in good form. And... From early when, it, when the season started, I believe he went probably the first three or four games without scoring. But he was he very heavily involved in in the attack. He, he, he probably had a number no, 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 of assists in those in those games, and that trend has continued throughout the season, scoring, assisting, scoring, assisting. So is that really typical number nine where we just focus so much on scoring? He is very integral to the attack in terms of 
finishing as well as supplying others. So, especially at home, they have been very potent, scoring a, a, a number of goals. Mind you, they do concede as well, but the offense has been bailing out the defense. And mind you, I, I, as you said, he's in red, red hot form. Well, a red hat farm. I mean, he he should have by now circle booked his ticket on that Euro flight for England. I mean, can you really see Watkins not making that sojourn to the Euros? Uh no. I think it's very it's very unlikely, highly unlikely that he would not be on on, on that plane to the Euros. I mean, his season has been too good for him to be sidelined. Mind you. You look at the other strikers available. Solanke is in with a, a, a shot as well. Ivan Tony coming back as well. Uh, yeah. um, Kane, of course, over there in Germany, so uh, cool. uh, scoring left, right, and center, probably picking up the golden boot in that in the Bundesliga. Right, likely. I, I mean, probably Wilson um, is you know spent too much time on the on the bench to be given a, a serious um, look in. If you look at um, some other younger strikers um, from the from, from smaller teams, at the bar, you, are, you know they have shown some a bit of a promise, but no, they, they will really make it. But I believe Watkins and and Kane, yeah, Kane has first choice, of course. And maybe what Watkins probably a first year should, should you decide to take off Kane or try some, 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 some something else in one of the, the weeks, and, you know. Ah, definitely. I mean, Watkins is really pushing. Possibly for us, even a starting berth. I mean, any slip from Kane right now, Sir Cole, and I mean, he, Watkins become an automatic pick. I mean, his season has been that good. And as I mentioned, not only goals, but assists as well. And he has become really that focal point and that talisman for this Aston Villa team. And I mean, Aston Villa is really riding high in the top four. And Watkins is a big part of that success. <laughs> but I mean, yeah, it could work well for, for, for England as well because we have seen Kane drop deep many times. So to, to play that kind of decoy role to be advanced, drop deep, create space for, 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 for Watkins, it could work depending on how, how creative the coach is, which is with, with, with his tactics. Ah, well, I mean, we're talking about Southgate here, Sir Cole. I mean, these guys don't really change tactics too often. It's that lone striker flanked by two wingers. I mean, that is the tried, tested, and proven methodology that Southgate tenure as the England boss have really been built on. I mean, to a large extent, it has failed to deliver silverware. I mean, a Euro final, but that's as good as it as it comes. And you know, going forward, something might need to change. Sometimes he might just need to unleash the attacking threat, which is this England team. I mean, currently looking at the league circle, the, the better players are the better offensive players operating right now in the English Premier League are English. When you look at the likes of a Foden, a Saka, a Watkins, I mean, these guys are right. busting in the goals week in, week out. A Rice as well, you know, you throw yeah, Rice in there. Yeah. You know, so, I mean, can England take it this year, Sir Cole? I mean, the Euros is, what, 100 days away? Can England finally deliver? Well, we have two um, big friendlies coming up later on this month. We play, I think, Brazil and, and Belgium. So those will be two good indicators as to how ready uh, this England team is. But... uh there really aren't many in world football that can stand up to England at this moment in time. That's for sure. Ah, indeed, indeed. Uh, just the European teams will be trying to stand up come this summer. And so far, England has failed to deliver. They have deceived and have really come short in recent times, even with this abundance of talent. You know, Southgate seems very reluctant to unleash the these attacking threats i mean when you look at players like Grealish, who is even failing to get into that man city team you know the abundance of attacking threat madison again another one who has really been having a decent enough season and should be looking at you know completing his selection for the euros but ah uh, time is the master circle time is the master but circle getting back to this game aston villa yeah. taking on spurs how do you see it playing out and what's your predicted scoreline for this one I see 
um, end to end action. I see both teams finding the back of the net. I see Aston Villa coming out three two winners over Spurs. Three two winners. I do see both teams scoring circle. That is one guarantee I will make to our viewers and subscribers. If you're really a betting man, then both teams to score seems like a lock, a banker. Ah, uh, you know, both teams defensively have been leaking goals all season. Uh, Aston Villa, but at the same time, you know, both teams do have the attacking potential and the attacking threats on the field that will get you goals as well. Uh, for me, with this being a very tight affair and with the sort of uh, European position really riding on this game circle, I don't think both teams will really ch throw caution to the wind. I think it will be a cagey affair to start. And once either team gets that first goal, then it may very well open up this game. So for me, I'm going to go with a 2-1 Aston Villa win circle, I believe, with the fans behind them playing in front of their home crowd, uh, with the sort of pressure that comes with finishing in the top four and getting that automatic European position with their destiny in their own hands. You know, all they have to go there and do is really just beat this first team. And, you know, this first team over the past couple of matches have been showing some weaknesses, especially from a defensive point of view and with the sort of attacking threat that Aston Villa have when you look at the likes of a Leon Bailey. I, it would not surprise me if there's a Leon Bailey-Watkins combination for a few goals in this one circle. And, of course, Aston Villa also picking up some goals out of their midfield with the likes of a... Luis Diaz, you know, I believe he is one of the most underrated midfielders in the league currently. You know, he is quietly getting the business um, done. Douglas Luiz, you mean? Right, Douglas Luiz. That's right, the Brazilian, you know. Yeah. Uh, quietly getting the business done, Sir Cole. Um, Magin is another one, you know, popping up with a few goals this season when he is not used to being a regular goal scorer so to speak you know he has really led from the front in terms of his work rate uh his attacking threat and just his overall performance so for me i'm gonna back aston villa circle you know you called it early in the season that aston villa would be the new castle of the season and thus far so said so done so i'm gonna ride with them for this game and indeed i believe they have enough firepower to really finish in the top four as well and get that automatic Champions League spot. I believe Spurs is just going to come up just a little short, you know, and might need to dip into the transfer window this summer and really try to find some gems and build this Spurs team into a possible contender or even a top four team for next season. But I believe this season will come a little too early for them. And I believe Aston Villa should have enough in this game and... I believe if they can get this three-point circle, it should seal their fate in the top four. You know, Spurs would be the closest team to them. They have a five-point lead over Spurs. Spurs do have a game in hand, but if they can manage to open up a, a, not, a, a, a bit more daylight between the two, then I believe the momentum should drive them home and they should finish in the top four. But time is the master circle and we will definitely see this one taking place early Sunday. And I will definitely be locked in to see what's going on over there at Villa Park. But we move circle and we pivot to the big one. Possible title deciding game circle. Liverpool taking on the mighty Man City. How do you see these two teams circle entering into this game? Well, it shows the levels that the teams are operating at. If with more than 10 games to go, we're still saying that it can be a title decider. There are still more than 30 points on offer. <laughs> to um you know to 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 close out the season but with first playing second i mean it really is a, a big game a lot on the, the line man city look, looking to become the first team to win four straight um liverpool trying to deny them you know that, that, that chance liverpool having the lead i think liverpool had lost only twice so Indeed, far, I mean, last only twice, and one of those losses circle, I would call it highway robbery because robbery. that last game against Spurs, where uh, uh, I mean, a regular good goal was chalked off. Yeah. So, <laughs> really, to me, in my mind, Liverpool have only lost once, and that last game against Arsenal. Well, 
we'll we, we, we really work with what the books say. We, we, we just the two losses <laughs> on this one. <laughs> but they, they, they really have, have been playing some good stuff, especially considering the, the amount of injuries that they've suffered as well. Youngsters have, have really been stepping up and when you look at and you see the amount of late goals they are scoring, especially when they are down, it does send the signals that they have the hunger and you know that fight to see see games through and, and pick up pick up those 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 essential points. So they are really showing signs of championship material, but we have learned as well from experience that do not count out City at any point in time. And I believe should the City get their noses in front, we have seen that they do not give up that um that lead when they get it so the aim is to is to, is to, is to keep keep man city back and if they can do that but anyway, they, they still have um arsenal as well which is uh, playing fantastic stuff so the, 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 that those two teams behind them are really putting a lot, lot of pressure on the pool because they have to know with on two slips <laughs> in Mm. Indeed, indeed, indeed. Mm. And, you know, Liverpool really have their destiny in their own hands. So I wouldn't even be banking on Arsenal. Arsenal have disappointed so many fans in recent time that it would not surprise me if Man City go there and beat them. So Liverpool having the opportunity now to face a Man City, they have to take their opportunity, especially playing at home circle. I mean, their previous meeting... In the EPL this season, that one ending in a draw, Man City went ahead early in that game, Sir Cole, but they were pegged back by Trent really silencing the crowd and that one ending in a 1-1 draw at the Etihad. So this game taking place in front of an Anfield audience provides Liverpool with the perfect opportunity to open up some daylight on City and apply some pressure to the chasing pack, Sir Cole. Yeah, that, that that's that's very good um in theory, but um past games have very little to no bearing on, 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 on the present game. We saw where where Manu who at the time were were, were were playing anything, went to um went to Anfield and, and left left with a point. So <laughs> Man City, I believe, at this point is way better than than, than, than Manu. So it's not it's nothing possible for Man City to go to go to Anfield and leave with and leave with, leave with all three points. Indeed, I mean this is definitely a mouthwatering fixture, especially for the neutral circle. And you know, Man City should be riding high after their victory over Manchester United uh, in in last week's fixture. I mean, Liverpool coming off a magnificent performance in the Europa League, dismantling Sparta Moscow five one. You know, Darwin Nunes popping up with a brace, two quality strikes, circles, sublime strikes, and he is a constant threat once he is fit and in that Liverpool team. So this one is going to be a, be a very tight, a fierce circle. I would say, though, circle that Liverpool has somewhat of a psychological advantage by the mere fact that they uh, have that point lead at the top right there. So possibly, I'm not sure, maybe there's less pressure in that it's not a must-win game, quote-unquote. But I'm not sure how these two teams will approach this one, especially with these two managers. Well, I believe it it is a most game for most win game for for both teams. So Man City needs to win to get their lead. Liverpool needs to win to maintain their lead. But somehow, when we look at it, any result. Provided that the Arsenal wins, is a good result for, for Arsenal. <laughs> so, so um, that that three horse race about the top there is is really interesting. It's really nailed by a thing. Very rare we have such, such, such a close um, race towards towards the end. And Arsenal, based based on their form, honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if they. If, as I did say last week, um, they will finish within three points of, of, of the winners, whoever wins the league, including uh, themselves. Which, which yeah, possible. definitely. I mean, that's the, what should I say? That's the, you know, the spanner that is in the, the mix that there is a third team lurking. <laughs> and mm-hmm. I'm sure any two of those teams which are playing, that's going to be in the back of their mind. So oftentimes in the past, it would have been a two-horse race. But no, there's a third team involved. So that draw factor 
I think would be the worst result for either of these teams in that by drawing, you pretty much leave the door open for Arsenal to step in. So to me, the best result would be one of these two teams either winning or losing. In that mm-hmm. way, they still maintain a lead over Arsenal going mm-hmm. forward. But a draw, both teams would have draw points and that will only bring Arsenal further into the mix. I love to see what the what the odds are for, for, for a draw in that game because a draw I think is a is a high high possibility. And Arsenal, of course, we would be hoping for a draw. So Yes, that would be the perfect yeah. result for, for yeah, Arsenal, yeah, especially yeah, if they can beat Brentford. Yes, yeah, so uh, based based on the on, on their form, they are more than odds on favorites to see to, to see each other that outcome. So this this weekend has a lot, a lot to to say in terms of where where the title goes, I, I think. Ah, definitely, I, I I can't agree with you more. This is definitely a weekend that could decide the future home of the EPL title. But circle from a tactical point of view, we see a number of Liverpool players that have been injured and are now coming back into the fray. You know, Club Kids has taken apart Chelsea in the Carabao Cup, uh, lifting the first uh, trophy of the season. We see a number of senior players now slowly making their way back into the fold, into the first team. You know, Salah got a run out uh, versus Sparta earlier this evening. Uh, Sobasly is back getting a run out again. And of course, a few players who had some nicks and bumps like Endo, McAllister, Darwin, Nunes, they are also there, thereabouts. I do anticipate that these players will play some role versus Man City, whether starting or coming off the bench. And I think, you know, the the, the substitutions may play a very key role in this game, Sir Cole. Yeah, um... The Liverpool quality, you say, has, has really not dropped despite the absence of some of the key players from their team at various points in time. It speaks a lot to the work that Klopp has put in to, make, to make, you know, maintain the quality so that when changes are probably forced on you through injury or suspension, you really can, can cope. And we have seen that they have um, come through with full marks. So far, I don't believe they have really dropped a point either, let alone lose a, lose a game in the absence of those players. So kudos to the entire management staff because really isn't a one-man effort. They have to have the physios and things to keep the, the players with the other coaches that, that, that really work, work with the team. So in terms of so, Sunday's game, I do believe that even without the... You say, as you said, the top players, they still would have been able to put up a, a, a good showing. Nonetheless, no, with against City, my anyway, it's a harder test, but I, I believe, I believe they, even, even, even on, on the losing side, they wouldn't have been blown away, I think, at, at all. Ah, definitely, you know, uh, the squad depth have really been tested over the last couple of weeks, indeed, and... You know, the the marginal players really stepped up and did the job in the absence of the more senior players or the more big name players, so to speak. You know, the likes of Elliot and the the rest of youngsters really stepped in and really held it together. Up to this moment, Sir Cole, I believe Klopp was planning for this moment that the bigger players, the more senior players should be back for this game, this top of the table clash to really face this mighty Man City team, Sir Cole. And as you say, Man City is really going for four in a row. And they are also chasing back-to-back treble as well, Sir Cole. <laughs> Let's not forget, I don't hear a lot of persons talking about this, but Man City is doing quite well in the Champions League. They are now true to the quarterfinal round. I mean, they are second in the league, a point behind Liverpool. And of course, they are also into the, the latter stages of the FA Cup. So it's quite possible that City could possibly do back-to-back trebles. I don't hear a lot of pundits in the bigger media houses really looking at this possibility. Maybe that's because the pool fans speak a bit more than the Man City fans. <laughs> the pool <laughs> fans are the ones who, who hype up these things. I understand. So the Man City fans have learned to kind of um, you know, be calm and, and just do their, their thing. And yes, you, you are right. They are they are really chasing 
back to back troubles. So, mind you, uh, it would speak a lot about the quality of Pep's work to pull off four straight and back to back troubles, unprecedented. Uh, that must be, I think, in, in, in his mind, and he knows that this game is pivotal in achieving those, 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 those outcomes. So, I believe that, yes, Man City will, 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 will be going out there, guns blazing. To, to get those three points as well. Indeed, indeed. But Sir Cole, from a tactical point of view, what can we expect from these two teams? Will we be seeing anything different or will it be the usual Man City versus Liverpool? All guns blazing, head-to-head matchup, winner takes all sort of game. We have learned to expect some things from, from, from Pep. There will be some change that we are not expecting. Probably in the in the midfield, you know, when well, he, he, he now he tends to do a lot of rotation. But um, we believe that right now, Haaland, Foden definitely are a part of the the front three. Likely Doku on the, the left. A midfield trio, um Rodri, Bernardo, um for sure. As we will employ as the, as the as the third midfielder for this game, possibly a Kevin De Bruyne. Well, like Kevin De Bruyne, um, or Alves, Alvarez. We we, we, we we don't know. So I mean, it, it is still whichever three of the of the four he, he he really decides to to use. And in defense, we know that anything is possible. We see we saw Stones returning. Um, recently so mind you his tactics are always on point for all these games and regards of, of who turns out we know it's guaranteed, guaranteed to be a good game ah indeed indeed definitely you know this is two top managers going head to head and i am sure whatever pep comes up you know Klopp will definitely has his own game plan also especially playing in front of home fans and really this is the, his last hurrah you could say in competitive football versus pep you know uh club did make his announcement that will this will be his final season for liverpool so i am sure he would want to go out with a bang and really get this massive three points over man city so you know i you know in this in the game earlier today versus Sparta, you saw a lot of your potential starters getting an early rest so the likes of a darwin nunes possibly a salah as well you know salah did not play that full game he came on as a second half sub uh a few other players you know van dyke as well van dyke as well so you can see the sort of thinking or the sort of rotation where he is really saving these players for mm. this massive matchup mm. versus man city so i mean in terms of club circle, it's the it's the usual four three three that will be deployed for sure. It's just a matter of how that midfield is set up, so to speak. You know who plays where. Uh, does one of the right back come in and offer an additional body in the midfield? So it's just a bit of dynamism and counter pressing tactics so to speak, that will determine chances are the outcome of this game. So two top managers, managers who are willing to make adjustments on the fly, and as the game progresses, whoever gets that first goal will definitely have an upper hand in this one and will force the other manager into making some sort of tactical change or even personal change as well. I think um, Liverpool would have, stand, would have stood a better chance had they had Jota um available he has so far proven to be like the mystery man being able to play a, a number of roles whether out wide um through the middle or on the on the on the next side so his absence i think would definitely be, be felt for you know a, a game like like this however they still have enough firepower to really push through and and to cause some damage to man city should things go their way 
Ah, indeed, indeed, you know, the Liverpool faithful will definitely bank in on Darwin Nunes finding two quality goals in this one, Sir Cole, you know, uh, definitely. But in terms of how you anticipate this game, Sir Cole, will play out and give us your predicted scoreline, you know, from a, a fairly neutral point of view. What says you? How do you think this one will end? Uh, honestly, I believe it, it, it will be one of those games where... It is too highly anticipated so that in the end it seems like kind of anti climatic I don't think we, we will see a, a 3 to nail biting finish. I don't think we, we, we will see a, 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 a 4 3 like we, so, 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 some years ago with Man City and, and Manu where it came down to a, you know, a late last minute um, goal to decide. I believe that this one will probably end in, in a stalemate again. 1-1 one, one do, down the middle. Ah, 1-1 one, one down the middle is your call, Sir Cole. For me, Sir Cole, I'm going to go out on a limb for this one, and I'm definitely calling Liverpool for the win. You know, I, I am going to back Liverpool on really lifting this EPL title in Klopp's final season as the Liverpool manager, Sir Cole. And for me, this one, I believe it will be a very competitive game. You know, I anticipate both teams to score. In fact, I would go as far as predict Man City will score first, as have been the case in a number of Liverpool games where the opponents score first and Liverpool manage to claw their way back and eventually come up with the goods and find that winner. So for me, Sir Cole, I'm going to go with a 2-1 victory for Liverpool. Uh, I expect both teams to definitely score, as I mentioned earlier, possibly a Haaland, you know, Haaland is always active, you know, and it would not surprise me one bit if it's a Foden Haaland combination that gives Man City an early lead. But I just believe the force of Liverpool will rise to the top and they eventually come out victors with a 2-1 win. I, I do believe that based on how I've, I've observed Foden playing, for this, which probably a, a more potent threat for uh, this game. He, his movement has been superb. Um, he, he he shows up in some little pockets and somehow they, they, they wherever he is, they, they find him. And he has been lethal from left, from the right, from the middle. Uh, I'm thinking that Foden will probably find um, the goal for this one for Man City. But as I'm saying, um, it will be one of those games where there is too much on the, the line to really risk losing. And, and I'm seeing a 1-1 one, one draw for this one. Indeed, indeed. Definitely one to watch, viewers and subscribers. And of course, this one coming up on Sunday. But Sir Cole, again, let me thank you for coming through and really sharing your thoughts and your opinions. You know, uh, some really interesting perspective there on these two Big games coming up. Again, viewers and subscribers, let me thank you again for tuning in to us here on Beating the Press Podcast. You know, continue to support us by dropping a like. Give us your prediction. And of course, if you haven't subscribed as yet, hit that subscription bell. But until next time, this is Rafa signing off.